What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I'm gonna walk you through basically an intro to Studio One. Studio One is my DAW of choice. I've used it for several, several years now. Before that, I was an avid Reaper fan and I used Reaper for years as well. But for those of you who have Studio One, I'm gonna basically walk you through sort of a rudimentary or a, a low level introduction on how to get started with Studio One, some things to consider, some tips, all while creating a template that you can save and basically use so that anytime inspiration strikes, all you have to do is load up this template and you can dive right into recording your ideas. We're going to set up audio tracks. We're going to set up instrument tracks. We're going to set up buses. I'm going to go over some settings I change, enable or disable to get things to work the way I like them to work. Now, a lot of these concepts can be applied to whatever DAW you are using. If there's a DAW out there that you're using and I can get my hands on it and you want a template video like this, let me know down below in the comments. If you want a template type video for Reaper, let me know again down in the comments below. So prepare yourself. This one is probably going to be long. Get yourself some of the drink, get comfortable. And most importantly, I hope it's helpful and I hope you learn something. So let's go over to the computer. If you're into guitars, metal riffage, mixing, and everything in between, hit subscribe and follow along. So I have my template open and I'm going to demonstrate to you that it works. So let me record the right side of this track. Boom, we recorded. Playback. So what we have set up here is we have drums, we have two guitar tracks, one panned hard left, one pan hard right, two bass tracks. Because a lot of the times, some people like to have a clean bass tone and then a dirty bass tone and kind of blend those to mix. So this gives you the opportunity to just do that. If you want a little bit more flexibility, depending on what your setup is, you can also add more guitar tracks. If you want, I probably would for my particular template, but this is just basically a simple template that you can set up and get up and running. So let's dive into how we made this template or how you can make this template and we'll go over basically sort of like an intro walkthrough of Studio One while we do it. So I'm going to try and walk this fine line of giving you enough information to get up and running and not going too far into the weeds and confusing some people that might be more at the beginner level. So I'm going to do my best. Apologies if I divert too far in either direction. But we're here at the beginning splash screen for Studio One. And the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that we have our interface selected and all related settings are in order. So we can do that by either clicking here on the little icon or by going up to Studio One and hitting options and then going to audio setup. It'll bring you to the same place. So we click on our interface, we bring, if we click this drop down arrow, all the active interfaces or drivers that Studio One finds will be presented here. So as you can see, I have my Helix, it's my Helix rack, HX Stomp, Podgo, and then all of the Presonus drivers. So I use a Presonus 1824 USB. So I select Studio USB. Device block size. Now, my machine can run a lower sample size, and the advantage of running a lower sample size is obviously less latency. That might not be obvious, but that's how it goes. The smaller sample size, the less latency, but the more taxing it is on your system and your CPU. The bigger the block size, the less stress your CPU is under, but the more inherent latency that you run into. So if you're tracking through a plugin, 
you want to get obviously to as low as a sample size as possible. With my machine and the way it's built, I can record at the highest sample rate and not worry about it because I'm going directly into my interface through my Helix and I can hear the sound in real time. So that's not an issue for me. But again, if you're one of these guys that plays through an interface directly and then plays through a plugin, you're gonna have to take that into consideration. So I'll just leave it at 64 samples where I had it before. I don't wanna mess my screen capture up or anything. Sample rate is set to 48K. I always record in 48K. I also have my Helix outputting in 48K in, in its settings just to make sure everything's matched up. To change that, you hit control panel and this will bring up the control panel for whatever interface you may have on your machine. And if I click here, it'll bring up, nope, and it'll bring it up right here. I can change my sample rate here if I wanted to. My clock source, block size, I can also change here. So that's what that does. So once I know I have the right interface selected and I have all these settings correct, I'm pretty much ready to go. One thing I would recommend you do is going under processing. I noticed when I installed Studio One 5 after upgrading from Studio One 4 that this process precision was set to single 32-bit. As far as I understand, that means it's basically running in 32-bit. I don't want that. Obviously, I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, that's a legacy setting, I'm sure, if you're running on an older machine. But I switched that to double to 64-bit. You know, most people I think nowadays are running on a 64-bit machine. So make sure to check that. Make sure it's all copacetic with your particular setup with your machine. Other than that, you're pretty much ready to go. You don't need to dive too far into any of these other settings. We can in another video if you have more questions. But this is the basic way to get up and running. And some things to check just to make sure it's going to be running as smoothly and efficiently as possible. If you did have like an external device, like I have this complete control here, if you click on external devices, this is where you would add those devices. And that's just as easy as hitting add. Make sure that all the proper drivers are installed, obviously. And then you would, you know, select your particular MIDI device. I have the complete control S. So that's what I selected. Same thing applies for fader port. I have a fader port plugged in. And that's how you would do that. That's how you would go about doing that. So now that we have all that set up, let's dive in and I'll show you how to set up a song and we'll create that template. We'll go to new song. And you can see right here, I have my recording template already, but we're gonna create it from scratch. I'm gonna walk you through it. Sample rate, this is where you can select the sample rate. Resolution, again, um, I always record in 48K 24-bit. Time-based bars, I leave it at bars because that's how I like to work. You know, I want everything everything to fall on the grid. Well, I mean, not, you know, mechanical and robotic, but editing-wise, I like to edit with bars. Song length, I, I just leave it at five minutes. It'll adjust depending on whether or not your song gets longer, obviously. Tempo, this is where you would add in your tempo if you had an idea going in to what tempo you wanted. Otherwise, you can change that once you're in your project. Let's just change it to 120. That's pretty standard. Time signature, we'll leave that. Key signature, I don't know. Um, and we'll hit OK. Stretch audio files to song tempo. So basically what that means is as you're recording, if you increase or decrease the BPM, it will adjust your audio files. Obviously, it will degradate them in the process. So it's not something you want to do, but you have that option if you're working with samples, like high resolution samples. And then everything else I just leave, we'll hit OK. So we're creating an empty track or an empty song. And this is the song page. Uh, we have the browser open right now. So this is basically just your song page right here. If we hit F2, it brings up the edit. F3 brings up our mixer. F4 brings up our information panel. That'll come into play later. F5 brings up the browser. I don't expect you to remember that, but that's what they are. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll bring up the mixer. All right. And we can either hit this IO button to set up our inputs and outputs, or we can right click, go to audio IO setup. And this is where you can add, remove, adjust, tweak your inputs and outputs for your particular interface. So you can see the Studio 1824 has quite a bit. I have eight, it's eight channels and then additional channels with SPDIF. 
And that's how I have my Helix plugged in. SPDIF in left, SPDIF in right. You can see Helix left, Helix right, and then Helix stereo. You can see that I have this uh, rear channel number three on the back of my interface. That's where the SM7B is going in. Um, you can see that it's getting a signal right there. And that's pretty cool that you have that little fader there. You know, these are the, the front two inputs on my interface. Not that you need to know, but that's how these are set up. So if I wanted to say, add a stereo pair that I can utilize inside of my track. Um, as an example, I had the when I had the PodGo plugged in or the HX Stomp plugged in, I had it plugged into input seven and eight on the back. So let's do that. So we'll go add mono, add mono, and add stereo. So we'll do seven, eight, and then stereo. We'll call this HX left, HX right, HX stereo. It's as simple as that. So if I did actually have the HX stomp plugged in to input seven and eight, I could either select the left channel, the right channel, or a stereo pair if I was recording a stereo track. You can also color these tracks by clicking over here. So let's just do this nice little pretty color here. Okay. And then all you do is hit apply and it activates them. You can see that they're not grayed out anymore. You hit okay. And that's how you set it up. Now it will by default, we'll go back to there, at least in my experience, set your outputs to your, the first two. So that's my main outputs. I also have all these outputs if I wanted to, but I'm just going right to my outputs one and two. Output one and two also goes to my headphones. If I wanted to set up additional headphone cues, I have two headphone inputs or outputs on this interface. I could set up different headphone cues, but we're not gonna dive into that right now. This is all we need to know, that everything is properly set up. Okay, so now we have our audio inputs and outputs correctly set up. Let's start creating some tracks and building this template, all right? So the first thing we'll do is we're gonna need some drums and that's very, very simple to create an instrument track. Studio One has audio tracks, instrument tracks, automation tracks, uh, folder tracks if you want to organize your tracks into a folder. So when you're using virtual instruments, <sighs> excuse me, what am I, Ola? When you're using virtual instruments, you're going to use instrument tracks. Lo and behold, we're going to set this up to use Easy Drummer. I know not everybody has Easy Drummer. Easy Drummer for me is one of the best tools to use to just get your ideas out there. It's very low overhead, very low impact on your um, computer. So it's as simple as taking your virtual instrument and dragging it right onto the song page. And it creates an instrument track. It populates it with Easy Drummer. It brings up the interface and we're good to go. If it looks a little whack, it's because I am scaling this up on my 4K monitor. Because I'm blind, I have Windows scaled up to like 175, and then it doesn't scale very well inside of here. So that's on me. Don't blame the interface. I personally prefer to use the Metal Machine Original Mix. So we'll bring that up. Everything's good to go. You can't hear any of that because I'm realizing I don't have Restream on here. Let's set up Restream so you guys can hear what the hell I'm doing, huh? Restream Local Broadcast. Now, can you hear it? Yeah. So we have our drums set up. I like to color my drums red. So that's as simple as clicking right here or clicking down here. And it brings up the option to select a color. We can truncate this a little bit. Easy drums, simple as that. For now, we'll just keep it a stereo pair towards the end. I'll dive into how you can go about uh, doing a multi-output kind of a thing and send your kick and your snare and your overheads, your hi-hats to individual channels. But for now, we're gonna leave it at stereo. That's the simplest way to go about it. Again, we're just creating a template that you can bring up quickly and get going and recording. All right, so we have our drums created. Now, if we hit this I right here, you get this information. If you wanted to, it basically brings up another track right here. So if we didn't have the mixer, we could adjust panning, volume, solo, mute, add inserts or sends from this information panel as well. If we wanted to keep the mixer or if we had the mixer on another 
monitor, let's create some instrument tracks, shall we? Let's create four instrument tracks that we can use for guitar. We'll do two pairs. The easiest way to create tracks is just by hitting T, and it brings up the Add Tracks dialog box. You can see it says Guitar Bus 2 in there already. That's the last thing I did when I was kind of testing this whole video out. So we'll do Guitars 1. So it's going to name everything Guitars 1 that you create from here. So we'll, do, we'll need to do some renaming, but I'll show you. We're going to create audio tracks. You can also do this with instrument tracks, automation tracks, and a folder track if, you're, you, know, if you wanted to. So we're just creating audio tracks. We're going to create two. You can create as many as you'd like. We could do all four in here if we wanted, but I'm going to kind of show you a couple ways you can go about this. Select this pack folder checkbox, and I'll show you what that does. Select your color. I like my guitars to be orange. You can do whatever you want. It doesn't have to be orange. All right? You get to do whatever you want. Format. I almost always record my guitars in mono, so just the left side, unless I have specific Helix stereo effects going on that I want to capture in stereo. Then I'll record in stereo with the stereo track. But when I'm just tracking guitars, 99% of the time, just mono, and it's just going to be the left. In this preset drop-down box, you could basically, if, I, if you had uh, effects chain set up, this is where you could add it right away. I don't have anything set up. I should because I end up using almost the same plugins every time I mix my tracks, but that's for another time. We're going to leave that empty for now. Input. I want it to be Helix left. So now it will automatically set it up when, the, when it creates these tracks to use the left Helix input. Output is main. That seems pretty self-explanatory. So we'll hit OK. Now you can see it created this folder and then two tracks within that folder. Now, if we hit this I again, we can adjust our panning. So we'll make that left. If I hit F3, bring up the mixer. You can also do that here. We'll make this one right. Now you can see that inside the mixer, you only see the two guitar channels, but not the, the folder. Because it's just literally just an organizational tool right now. It's just a folder. But you can make that into a bus for these two guitar tracks. And all you have to do, you just click this down arrow right here and you go add bus channel and then boom now we see our bus for these two guitar tracks so i want that guitars one i'll call this guitar one left guitar one right i like to try and stay organized so now we have a, a, a double tracked group with a bus that we can adjust independently. So if I were to mute this bus, it mutes those two tracks, those two guitar tracks. Cool? If you click this little wiggly wave form looking thing, this brings up your automation. And by default, it'll create a volume and a pan automation track. You can go in here and add automation points. But again, that's probably diving in a little too deep for this particular video. But just know that it's there. All right, so we've created one pair of guitar tracks. Let's do it again. Now, I do find it a little annoying. You can't deselect, as far as I know, any track. If I have this selected and I create more tracks, it's going to throw it into that folder and into that bus, which is easy enough to fix, but I don't want to even deal with it. So I just click on the drum, the instrument channel, and we're going to create tracks a different way. So you right click over here and you can go add tracks and that'll bring up the add tracks dialog box again. Or we can just add a mono track or we can add a stereo track or we can add an instrument track. All right, so we're going to create two mono tracks. See that? You put it right inside of there. You dirty bastard. All you got to do is highlight it and drag them out of there. Now, we want to create a bus for these two in case we wanted to manipulate them independently of the other pair of guitar tracks. So we can highlight them here, right click, and we can hit pack folder, and it'll pack it into a folder. That's one way of doing it. You can do it here and do the same thing 
add bus for selected channels, and then it creates a bus, but it doesn't keep it organized in a folder. So I don't do it that way. You can see that it's going to bus one. And this is bus one, so this is basically a guitar bus, but I don't like doing it that way. I like to highlight them, pack folder. Again, it's just an organizational tool right now. There's no bus assigned to it. Hit the drop down arrow. This is the bus for the first pair of guitars. We could add it to that, but that would defeat the purpose. We want to be able to kind of manipulate these independently. We're going to add bus. Cool. We'll call this guitars two. Guitar two, whoop, left. Guitar two, right. I also want this orange creature of habit. So now we have two pair two stereo pair of guitar tracks with their own buses, independent buses, that we can, rec we can record to. And as you can see, I did forget a step. This has one of the front inputs. It, def it defaults to the first input, so we want to select Helix Left. Now, if we had the HX Stomp and we wanted to record from the HX Stomp or something else, you could select that here if you set up the input. Again, we're going to do Helix. Now the only thing left to do is to create a couple tracks for bass. Now I'm going to do a couple tracks because some people like to edit their bass tone where they have a clean bass tone for the low end and then they'll have like a dirty bass tone track basically duplicated and they will treat one by adding some distortion or different effects to make it sound gritty and then they'll blend those two. Or in my case sometimes I'll have like certain parts that need to be treated a little bit differently some parts that I don't have my dirty metal bass tone where it's a clean bass, and then I can have it there. So long story short, we're creating two bass tracks. So we're going to use the hit T, bring up the add tracks dialog box. We'll call this bass bus. Two audio tracks. We'll color it blue for bass. Mono. No preset. Select the helix left, outputs are main, hit OK, boom. There's our two bass tracks. You can see it gave it bass bus one, bass bus two. It doesn't really matter, right? Bass one. Nope. Come on, man. Bass one, tab down. Bass two. Again, this is, doesn't have a bus assigned to it, so we'll click the arrow and go. Add bus. So now we have our bass bus and we have our drums. We have two sets of guitar tracks and we have a set of bass tracks. That's all we really need to get up and running. But I'm going to dive into a little bit of housekeeping, a few settings that you might find useful that I particularly like adjust for the way I like things to work. That was a roundabout way of saying that. So if you hit this little wrench up here in the corner, there's some settings that I like to disengage and engage. You can see my settings right here. For selection, I have all of these turned off. Enable crosshair, cursor for tools, I keep that on. Cursor follows edit position. Colorize track controls. So if I were to turn that off, you would see that the tracks are basically just different shades of gray. And then just these little labels are colored. I like to have the whole track colored. So colorized track controls, and you can also see that within the song page, it colors them as well. Show channel number and tracks. I personally like to do that. I like the numbers. Show event names, I leave on. Show instrument part envelopes. I think I just left that default. The only thing I make sure that I do is colorize track controls. All right. Now down here, you also have some options as well. If you hit this wrench, these are for, this is for the mixer now. Um, these two, I don't know, I think they're default when you bring, when you load up Studio One, but I turn them off. Keep effects channels to the right, keep bus channels to the right. I like my bus channels to stay with whatever tracks are in that bus, if at all possible. Same with my effects channels. If I create an effect, like say I'm sending my guitars to a reverb, I will keep that reverb track by my guitar track. Let me show you. 
So say this pair of guitars I am using for an ambient type of thing. If we go to effects and we were to add, um, let's just friggin, it doesn't matter, add some analog delay to the bus, but in send form so I can control the mix. You drop it right on there, which is nice. It creates a track for your plugin. It hooks up the send automatically for you. And then boom, it pops it up for you. Now it put it right here, which is right basically be between the bus and the tracks in between. Now you can see we didn't adjust our panning there. But if if we had that selected where keep bus channels to the right or keep effects channels to the right, it would have shoved it all the way to the right. And I don't like that. I like to be able to move it. So I now I can say like, hey, this analog delay is for those guitars. That's how I like to work. So that's what that does. I also like to check this box, link expansion and visibility of folder tracks. Now what that does is if I close the folder here, it closes it down in the mixer. If I close a folder down in the mixer, it closes it up there. You See that? Everything works in tandem, everything works together. More often than not, I'll have my mixer over on my second monitor. So it's helpful to keep everything organized. If I have a ton of tracks by the end of uh, uh, the construction of a song, I can close all those buses and have a little bit more of an idea of where the hell I am. If I were to not have that selected, link expansion and visibility of folder tracks. If I deselect it in the mixer, it keeps everything open. Everything is expanded. Everything is always there. And you can see that now I have to pan to see all my tracks. So link expansion and visibility checked, cleans it up, closes them up. If I need to adjust stuff inside of there, if I need to see, I can just click. Simple as that. What else? I like to do colorized channel strips. Again, same kind of thing as up above in the song page. I like them colored. Colorized plugin header. That's not a huge deal, but so our analog delay. Let's color it. What's a good color for delay? This greenish type of color. If I click on the plugin, you can see that the header is now green. And I think that is just pretty neat. Let's change it to a not so bright green. There we go. That's all that does. It's just a way to kind of stay organized. One important thing that I like to make sure that I see is the input controls. Now what that does is it basically, you have polarity controls here and you have a gain control, which is nice because when I'm mixing, when it gets to that point, I like to have all my faders at unity gain or at zero before I start mixing and have everything at a pretty relative level. And the best way to do that is to either control how loud you record stuff, to control the output of your virtual instruments, or you can control it here. I know that um, these drums are usually a little bit hot, so I'll set this up to be negative five. So if I were to drop in some drums, I know I'm not gonna be in the red. Around negative nine or so. That's good, that's fine. So now we have the basics set up. Now, you may or may not want to have this delay. I'm actually gonna get rid of it because I just want a clean slate. Now all I did was, here, let me show you what I did. I went to the bus, hit the down arrow, and I just hit remove. So it's removing the send to that bus with the delay. I went to the delay, click the down arrow, hit remove. I removed the plugin. Now if we right click on this track and we go to remove, it removes the track. So now we just have, we're back to just having our instrument track, our drums, our pair of, our two pairs of guitar tracks and our bass. And this random track that's right there. Remove. Since we're here, I'll show you how to, say if you wanted to create a stereo guitar track, if you're recording, you know, if you wanted to capture stereo input, 
in my example, if I had some delay and reverb on a, a Helix preset and I wanted to record it, hit right click, add audio track stereo. And then you're going to select your input. So I'm going to go down to Helix stereo. So that's the spit of left and right. And then boom, we have our stereo guitar. Now it's just floating out there on its own. So that's fine. Or we can create a bus with a couple stereo tracks. So let's do that. Right click, add stereo track. We'll call this guitar stereo one not exclamation point, tab down, guitar, stereo, two. Okay. Let's just color these a different color since, you know, Bob's your uncle. Highlight them, right click, pack folder. I love how it puts it in a different color. We'll call this guitar stereo. Again, there's no bus. We'll create a bus. Add bus. Boom. We'll move that down here. Cool. So now we have a pair of stereo guitar tracks. If we wanted to, we have two pair of double track guitars left and right. That's how you would normally record. And we have our bass tracks and our instrument track. Now, if we're going to save a template, we don't necessarily want any MIDI in there. So we'll get rid of that. We have the basics set up. Now, if you were to always going to have piano in your tracks, you know, you would say you wanted to always have easy keys. You just drag and drop that in an open area and it's going to do the same thing. It creates an instrument track, names it easy keys, opens up the plugin, you're good to go. And we can leave that, that's fine. I'll put this up top. We can leave it labeled easy keys, no big deal. That dark blue, I'll change it to that color we have, because our bass is blue. So now we have drums, piano, guitars, bass. We're good, we're good to go. That would be a quick and light project to open up so that you could get your ideas down. Now it's as simple as going to file, save as template. Now by default, it takes the title of the particular track you're in. So we're going to call this YouTube uh, recording template. And we'll type in easy drummer, easy keys. guitars, and bass. We hit OK. Now what it's done is it's created a template. Now we don't necessarily need to save this. It's already sort of saved it. If we were to close it, Control W or File Close, you know, we're fine because we created our template. So we go Control W. Do you want to save? No. Now we're back at the main screen. If we were to click new song inside of our, the user tab, you have empty song or our different templates. This is my recording template. It's basically the same thing minus the easy keys and the stereo guitars. You can see easy drummer, two double guitars and bass. YouTube recording template, easy drummer, easy keys, guitars and bass. So if we were to open up that, hit okay. Boom, it loads everything up. We can bring up our drums, get our idea going. Start tracking. It's as simple as that. Now, I noticed a mistake and I'll show you how to fix something inside of your template. So I accidentally saved it with Restream on there. So let's remove that. Let's remove this MIDI. We'll go File. Save as template. Now we're not going to create a new template. We're going to replace existing. This was our YouTube recording template. We hit open and we hit OK. So it just replaced it. So now Control W to close out of there. Do we want to save? No. Cool. 
create new song, go to our YouTube recording template. If you wanted to adjust the, the sample rate, the, the resolution, or the BPM, you could do that here. Just hit OK. Again, it's going to load everything up. Now you can see Restream is gone, our MIDI is gone, but everything is good to go. If we were to open our buses, you can see that our panning is how we set it. I like keeping everything clean and in folders and their own buses because tracks add up quickly. So that is a basic run through of Studio One and how to take those basics and create a recording template again so that you can jump on your computer, open up your template and get your ideas down. Because I know personally, I've had more than one occasion where I have a riff idea, I don't come downstairs and record it or I don't record it into my phone and then it's gone. Some will say, if it's good enough, you'll remember it. To those, I say F off. So now as a bonus, I'm going to show you how to send your easy drummer or potentially other virtual instruments onto separate outputs or a multi-channel setup, if you will. We'll close this mixer and I'll close all these folders for now. We'll start by, you click this little piano icon and it brings up the virtual instrument. So right now we have Easy Drummer just going to a stereo bus down here. You can see Easy Drums. Let's bring in some, and we'll loop it. See how I did that? You just bring it up, you come up to the top, and that little pencil, you can just draw your loop in. So we'll draw our loop in, hit this backslash on the keyboard, you enable or disable your loop, or you can do that down here. I believe if you hover over it, it'll tell you loop active numpad backslash. So I have the loop on and you can see that we're just going out to a stereo pair. That's fine and dandy for getting your ideas down, but say you begun the mixing process, you like these drums, but you want to be able to tweak things individually, that's what we're going to do. So, I'm not sure what's open by default. So, I closed everything on this panel. Let's close this information panel. So, say we just have your mixer right here. If you click this little down here, what this does is it shows everything you have going track-wise. And the reason why these are grayed out is because it's not visible right now. So if we open up the bus folder, you see them, you know, look active. So basically tracks that you are able to edit parameters or that are active, if you will. Everything's active, but visible. How about that? Visible. All right, so that's what that does. And you can deactivate stuff by hitting this, just completely hide it if you wanted to. So say you're not using easy keys, but you didn't want to delete it because maybe you had some MIDI information there. You could hide it if you bounced it to a stereo or yeah, if you bounced it to an audio track, you didn't want to get rid of the instrument, you can just hide it. That's how you would do that. Now, if we go to this instrument right here, it says I-N-S-T-R instrument. It brings up the active virtual instruments that we have in our project. Easy Drummer and Easy Keys. We bring this arrow, you can hit expand, you can rename it. So if we wanted to call this drums, it changes the name of the instrument to drums, whatever you want to do. You can bypass it here, you can store a preset. If you were to set it up, you could save it as a preset, but we're not going to dive into that. You can just click it and you can see that you have all these potential outputs. Now, that's not going to do us any good if we activate them right away. We can, but I'll show you what order I would do it in. So inside of Easy Drummer and every virtual instrument, I believe, should be able to do this if it's multi-output capable. This is the way it works in Easy Drummer. You're going to have to do a little research for whatever particular drum program you're using. Go to Mixer. And you can see, if I were to play, 
hi-hat, snare, kick. But it's all going to output one. As you can see, we got one stereo track. If we were to right click on that output, actually, we don't even need to right click. You can just normal click. And down here, you can hit multi channel. And then it changes. So the kicks are on one now. The snare is on, snare top is on two, snare bottom is on three. It divided it that far. Hi hat's on four, rack toms are on five, floor tom is on five. The right is on six, overhead is on six, ambient is on seven, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I'm gonna tweak this a little bit. You could just roll with it that way, and then you activate all of these. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send both kicks to one, that's fine. I'm gonna send the snare top and the snare bottom to two. I'm not gonna EQ each of those pieces individually. Some people do, and that's fine. You could leave them separate if you want. Hi-hat's on four, the rack toms are on five, a lot of times you want to treat your floor toms differently, so we'll put those to six. The ride will switch to seven. The overhead will switch to eight. The ambient will switch to nine. Ambient mono, let's just put that at nine as well. Reverb at 10. One shot, 11. Shaker, 12. Tambourine, 13. Percussion, ambient, 14. I doubt we're gonna use any of that stuff for metal productions, but hey, you might. So now everything is set up inside of Easy Drummer. We can add these. So what we go to, I forget. Realistically, reverb is a 10. That's the last one we'll probably use. So we can go to 10. Boom. Now, You can see, if we hit play, the kick's going to one, snare's going to two, hi-hat to four. Cool. I skipped three. Weird. Doesn't matter. And you can name these, so we'll call this kick, snare, um, that's going to bug me. Hi-hat, three, rack toms, four, 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 floor tom, five, five, ride, six, overhead, seven, ambient, eight, ambient mono, eight, reverb, nine, one shot, 10, shaker, 11, Tambourine, 12, percussion ambient, 13. Doesn't matter, I'm not gonna use them. If I find myself using them, you can always add them in. So we're just at nine now. So to stay organized, I like to name it. Three is hi-hat, four, uh, rack toms. So we'll call it racks, floors. Six is the ride. Overhead, ambient, or rooms. And then, what's it, reverb? Yep. And then, reverb. Now, those are all our drum inputs that we can now manipulate individually with EQ, compression, etc. And we can highlight them all. Right, oh, let's color color them all red, stay organized. Now, go right click and go to add bus for selected channels. Boom. Create a bus for all our drum parts or pieces and we'll call it drum bus. So now, if we're to play it, I mute this, you don't hear the drums. And we can solo things. There you go. That's how you multi-output for Easy Drummer. Superior Drummer is very much the same, but you may end up with way more tracks. So that's how you would do that and create individual tracks for your MIDI instrument. Simple as that. I know that was a crap load of information. 
I hope it was helpful. If you have questions down below, leave them comments. I will try to get back to them. The best way to get your question answered is to show up to one of my live streams. I do them every Saturday. I call it Late Night Saturday Hangs. It's at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. That is the best way for me to explain things to you, and I can more often than not just literally demonstrate it for you. So come hang out on Saturday if you have a question that I can't answer down below. There you go, guys. Hope this was helpful. All appropriate links down below in the description, including links to my music. And if you dig what I'm putting down, hit subscribe and follow along. All right, now I fully realize there was a lot of information there. So if you have questions, let me know down below in the comments or show up to one of my live streams every Saturday, late night Saturday hangs. We do it every Saturday and it's late night, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to make this template available to you guys, but of course, you're going to have to tweak it and adjust it because your audio interface more than likely is not the same. I don't know what drum program you're using. That being said, I will still make this template available to you. You're going to have to adjust your audio inputs, your outputs, and drag and drop whatever instrument or VST you're using for drums onto that instrument track. The point of this whole video and of this template is so you can just open up a project and get started right away. When inspiration strikes, you want to get the idea down as quickly as possible. And I find this the best way to just sit in front of the computer, open up that template and get my idea down. Then at least I know I got it out. We all have run into that scenario where we have a great riff idea or we come up with something cool and then we forget about it five minutes later. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thanks again for all the support. Thank you to you guys and everybody who's bought the Helix preset pack. It's doing well. I've got a lot of good feedback. Seems like you guys are digging it. I'm working on another preset pack, but I don't want to just bombard you with presets. But thank you guys so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot to me, and I'm really, really glad you're digging it. I'm glad you're liking it. I'm glad it's helping you get into the Helix a little deeper and getting you up and running faster. Special shout out to those of you supporting me over on Patreon and of course here as YouTube members. And if you're looking for other ways to support me, the channel, and what I'm doing, I do have music for sale on Bandcamp and available everywhere music is streamed. I do still have some merch available. Riffs mugs, Riff t-shirts, Riff sweatshirts. We're working on new designs, but get your Riff stuff while we have it. Again, thanks to everyone who's picked up a Riff mug. It's cool. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. Thanks again for being here, guys. I hope you're all doing well. Stay safe. Take care of each other. Have some patience. We're gonna be okay. We'll see you in the next one.